This is Trade Storm and you are watching fourth and final part of What If Naruto Learn Forgotten Martial Arts. If you enjoy this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. There was no doubt that the previous week had been a good one for Naruto. He'd returned home to his adoring wife Tsunami, who greeted him at the door with a kiss and a tackle because she was in such a horny mood and needed him right away. Naruto was just thankful that Inari lived at his grandfather's house because otherwise, all of this would have left him mentally scarred. But after several hours of sex, including several more when he took Tamari and Tsunami to Spring Country, Naruto left to meditate and train for the upcoming fight. He spent the entire week visiting one of the three women in his life and then exercising because a body like his had to be maintained if he wanted to keep the muscles he had. What's more, he took all three at the same time the day before he returned to Konoha, and by the time he was done with them, they couldn't move as he left for the airship that would take him to his destination. But a week had passed, and while Naruto indulged in the pleasures of the flesh in spring, Konoha in Fire Country buckled down and planned how to beat him. They devised numerous plans to force him into submission, knowing that even if they wanted him dead, they could do so later when the war was over and their village's security was restored. They summoned all of the high-ranking Jonin and Anbu they had scouted throughout the country to fight, while replacing them with lower-ranking individuals. Extensive complex seals were placed in the arena where they would fight, ones that would easily incapacitate the brat quickly so that they could defeat him without any casualties on their end, as they needed all the shinobi they could get to fight off the combined forces of Iwa and Kumo as soon as possible. Because Tsunade was an Uzumaki on her grandmother's side, they had to use some of her blood to create the specific seals they needed to win this fight. While the seals were designed to only affect Naruto when activated, Tsunade was also an Uzumaki, so she would be affected as well. But, in the end, she was fine with it because it would make it all the more worthwhile when the brat was forced into submission. Even the fire daimyo came to witness Naruto's submission, and he was looking forward to seeing the brat grovel at his feet in a weakened state. He had allowed the residents of his shinobi village to abuse him in the hopes that one day he would appear to him when he was far more humbled and submissive, allowing him to sign away his family's fortune to him. But the brat had taken everything with him when he was banished, and no matter how hard they looked, his shinobi could not find him, and once the brat was beaten into submission, he would get his hands on his money one way or another. A week had passed, and Naruto was now within sight of the village. He walked calmly towards the gate because everything was going as planned so far. As he approached the front gate, he was even whistling a tune. He came to a halt as he approached the guards and noticed their stares. He stood there laughing because he recognized one of them as the one he had knocked out the first time he returned. Because he was expected, the guards let him pass, and Naruto took about 10 steps into the village before being surrounded on all sides by Shinobi. Man, Naruto laughed, to think that all it took for me to receive this type of treatment was to leave for several years. If I had known that when I was younger, I would have left sooner than when you people banished me in my teen years. So you came like you said, Tsunade said as she and Jiraiya approached the front of the crowd. Yeah, Naruto said with a smirk and a shrug, because, unlike some elderly assholes I know, I actually keep my word. And what exactly do you mean by that brat? Snarled Jiraiya, irritated by the insult. It's not really that important. What matters is that we have a bet to settle, and I'd like to settle it as soon as possible so I can go home and fuck my wife. Well, if you're that eager to lose, Tsunade said haughtily, then let us head to the stadium to get this started. No, Naruto simply stated as he remained motionless with his hands in his pockets. Everyone came to a halt when he said that because they didn't expect him to say that out of the blue, or at all. Excuse me, Tsunade said, a smirk on her face, because she didn't like being challenged, especially by the brat she'd love to punch in the face if and when she got the chance. Wow, Naruto said with a grin, looking her in the eyes, it appears you were older than people think if you have a hearing problem, because I said no, you old hag. You agreed to fight us in a bet, and now you're complaining about it? No, I am not. I agreed to fight you to determine my future, 
but there was no mention of where we would fight in our terms, so I wish to fight in a location of my choosing. Yet the stadium is the logical choice, Jiraiya said, not wanting to waste all his hard work in creating the seals he placed within it by the brat simply not going there. There is also seating for many people who paid good money for tickets to see the event. Oh, I'm sure it's the ideal place to fight, because I fought there before and it worked. I also know you're right about the seats and the people because they'd love to see what they think will be my downfall. But you'll just have to refund their money because I'm not stupid enough to take even one step within a stadium that has been set up with seals to weaken me before I even started fighting. How did you know? Jiraiya wondered, as everyone else looked at Naruto, stunned that he knew about it. To be honest, Naruto said with a smile, it was an educated guess, but with you admitting it like that, it appears that you underestimated my intelligence like you all have for years. And how do you calculate that? Man, where do I even begin with that? Let's start at the beginning then. I always knew that my friends weren't that, and so when they turned on me the day I was banished, it didn't affect me in the least because I knew the day would come when it did. Then there was me knowing about my parents since I was six fucking years old. I took one look at a picture of Minato and then looked in. If you're so smart, Kaharu said, having had about enough of this brat. She had wanted him to be a mindless weapon since he was born, along with Homura and Danzo, but Hiruzen was opposed. And now that the brat knew they were going to use seals to contain him, their plans to make him submit quickly were out the window, so if he wouldn't willingly go to the arena, they would subdue him here and be done with it. Even if he won, they were never going to honor the deal because Danzo had multiple root shinobi in the shadows waiting for the brat, who would be exhausted from the fight and easily subdued afterwards. Then why would you willingly walk right into our trap? Do you think I didn't cover all my bases? Naruto said, looking at her old wrinkled face. The look in his eyes told her she was beneath him, and she despised that look in his eyes and plotted ways to punish him for even looking at her in that way. Then you should retire your old senile ass like I did. Do you see that floating object up there? Naruto pointed upwards, and when the people looked where he was pointing, there was a small airship with the spring country symbol on it. That, you worthless sack of flesh, is an airship. On it are several people under the orders of Koyuki herself to monitor this fight we are about to have. If I lose, they will leave because the agreement was that I would help you, and while I may hate you all with every fiber of my being, I am still a man of my word. So, if any of you have any plans to, oh, I don't know, force me into submission when this is all over, well. You all tried to break me when I was a child and failed. I'm now a grown man who is stronger than you would have ever allowed me to be, so you do the mental math. So, if you don't want to fight in the arena, Danzo said, enraged that the brat had planned this far ahead to counter everything they could and probably would do if push came to shove in the end, then where exactly do you want to fight? Simple, Naruto said as he pointed to the Hokage Monument. There's a fairly large training area nearby with a nice view that would be ideal for this epic battle we're about to have. To be honest, it was the only place in my entire time here where I felt at peace, which was a miracle considering how much I was abused. Very well then, said Tsunade, who was as annoyed as everyone else that the demon had foiled their plans and would actually put in the effort to bring him down. She signaled for one of her shinobi to relay this information to the people who had gathered in the stadium early because they wanted to get good seats to see Naruto get his ass handed to him, but they were now all pissed that they had wasted their time and money because the demon had changed the locatio. The fire daimyo had the best spot, with Danzo and his lackeys next to him. It took about 30 minutes, but the area was soon packed with as many people as could visibly see the fight. The shinobi who were not participating in it headed out towards the village, because in their minds they had already won this fight and there was no need to see it to know this. So the fire daimyo himself saw fit to get his fat lazy ass of his golden throne to personally witness this match, Naruto sneered, I don't know whether to be honored or disgusted by this. You watch your mouth, boy, the fire daimyo retorted angrily, refusing to be talked down to by a commoner like Naruto. And what does that imply? 
You are the leader of a country that has enraged most of the others into a war that you cannot possibly win, Naruto inquired, raising an eyebrow. Once this village is destroyed, the invading forces will move on and kill your pitifully weak ass. I am this village's only hope of surviving what is to come, and yet you try to play the royalty card to force me to respect you in some way. Guess what, asshole? I'm married to Koyuki, the spring daimyo, and as such, you and I are on equal footing on the hierarchy scale. But the main difference between us is that my country, unlike yours, is not in danger of being overrun by opposing forces. You married Koyuki? Tsunade was surprised to learn that Naruto had married someone so powerful. That I did, Naruto said, mentally smirking because it wasn't true, at least not yet. He planned to in the future, but now wasn't the time. But these idiots didn't know that, and they wouldn't. Because, unlike you, I can actually find someone. Oh, you'll pay for it, you brat. Said Tsunade, who was enraged to hear him say that. Well, I'd like to see your old ass try, Naruto said as he moved into position to begin the fight. In the back were all the senseis as well as the clan heads and their heirs who were holding back to plan accordingly if Naruto somehow managed to defeat so many people to even get to them in the first place. Naruto smirked as he cracked his knuckles. You will show me respect by the end of this, said the fire daimyo in a regal voice full of authority. Oh, I'm sorry, Naruto sarcastically said to the man, rolling his eyes, but I find it impossible to respect a man who allowed so many people to abuse an innocent child in one of the most messed up schemes to steal the money left to them by their family. How do you know about that? Inquired the fire daimyo, surprised that the one person he didn't want to know about the plan was aware of it. Because I saw you meet with Hiruzen when I was eight years old, Naruto smirked. So what if you did? Wondered the fire daimyo, who wasn't seeing the whole picture here, I met with the man on multiple occasions. This is true, but after I began to see through all the nonsense that this village tried to shove down my throat to hinder me, as well as knowing that Hiruzen was not the kind old man he pretended to be, I started looking into things, and that meeting you had with him revealed all the information I needed, I started looking into things. I hid in the air duct, as I had done before, and overheard you discussing your plans to take what was mine, my right of inheritance. And it was because of this that I devised and carried out my plans to withdraw my money from the bank so you couldn't get your greedy hands on it no matter what. But how did you even get it, brat? Enraged Tsunade, the bank had explicit orders to kick you out and to not serve you in any form. This is correct, Naruto said, but I simply used a skill that my mother knew and used it flawlessly. And what is that skill? The Shadow Clones. My clone crept in through the side and opened the vault to my money while I distracted the staff. Because the seal was made by my parents and I am descended from them, I was able to easily open it and silence the alarm. However, you found out when you were 13 and stole the Forbidden Scroll. If you really believe that, then you are dumber than I thought, Naruto laughed, amazed that no one had ever put the pieces together and realized he had played them. That technique was forbidden because it was fairly advanced and using it incorrectly would result in the user's death if done incorrectly. Now consider this for a moment. For as long as I can remember, my teachers have sabotaged my education, and like the actor I was, I played along and showed you all the dead last you wanted me to be in order to control me. Now, if I was truly that bad as you claimed, how could I possibly master a jutsu that could kill you within minutes of looking at it? So you've always known how to use that jutsu. Growled Jiraiya, who was furious to learn that the plans he and his sensei had devised to turn the brat into a loyal weapon had failed far sooner than they had anticipated. Of course, the Kiyubi, Naruto shrugged, he was the only true friend I had who told me the truth about my family. He was aware of what my mother was aware of and showed me how to train in her techniques. And you believed the demon. It wasn't a difficult decision. The Kiyubi offered knowledge and truth, whereas the village offered me nothing but pain and attempted to take everything from me, including my loyalty. But wait, the fire daimyo said, as something had been bothering him for a while, most of the money for your family was in the fire capital bank. 
How did you get it when you were never sent on a mission there? And you no doubt made certain that I would never go there, Naruto explained, but once I entered my rightful home, I discovered paperwork indicating where my money was and took action. I had to plan accordingly because the bank in the capital is far more secure than the one here. First, I used the money I earned here to pay the bare minimum for a vault, as they are quite expensive. I hacked a shadow clone into a fake persona and used false credentials. I had no trouble putting money in the vault when I opened the account. Then I waited a week before returning in disguise to retrieve their money from both vaults. The vaults are not monitored because tampering with the seals would cause an alarm, so once again my blood did the trick. You stole money that wasn't yours, Tsunade snarled. Actually, I didn't because it was rightfully mine. Naruto explained as he looked at her, but I knew you wanted it for yourself. I assumed it was because you were a greedy hag, but during my absence, I heard a lot of rumors. You're bankrupt because you foolishly gambled away the Senju's entire fortune. To make matters worse, you still owe money to a slew of debt collectors, and it is for this reason that you seek this money. And then I hear how you've been getting constant payment extensions by having Shizune whore herself out to them because you're too fucking high and mighty to do it yourself. You dishonor both sides of the family with your greedy nature, and while I pity her for what you put her through, it won't stop me from killing her. You will pay for this brat, said Tsunade, who was enraged that her dirty little secret of whoring out Shizune had been revealed to everyone. Those collectors had wanted her to sleep with them for an extension, but she was Tsunade Senju, not a whore. So she offered up Shizune, who was opposed, but a special concoction Tsunade made to inhibit her sexual urges fixed that right quick. I seriously doubt it. But overall, I'm glad to see you took my advice from the last time I was here seriously and gathered so many people to fight me, Naruto said, because this will make it far easier to break Minato's record for shinobi killed by one man in the third shinobi war. This is a knockout match, not a death match, said the fire daimyo. However, without my assistance, your village is doomed to perish. So I say it's a fight to the death because they'd be dead anyway without me. And I hope they come at me with the intention of killing me. Why should they change their ways now, when they have done so since I was a child? Now I want you all to pay close attention to this, Naruto said as he used his thumbs to jab specific pressure points in his legs, feeling the power surge through them at a tremendous rate and preparing to unleash it all at once in a moment. He was in front of them for a brief millisecond before his afterimage faded, then appeared behind the main group of shinobi, who all convulsed and exploded from his supersonic hokudo strikes. Those who witnessed this took a step back, unable to believe the demon brat could kill so many men in less than five seconds, even though they had just witnessed it with their own eyes. And just like that, his record is decimated, Naruto grinned, but the catch is that I can only use that move once every 24 hours or I risk losing my legs. So I'll have to take my time killing the rest of you. The initial shock of the massive death scene that played out in front of them finally subsided, and when it did, they came at Naruto hard. The first person to strike out against him was surprisingly Hanada herself, and Naruto smiled as he easily dodged the attacks she threw at him in an attempt to shut down his chakra system. It wasn't just her though, because he also had to dodge Neji and Hiyashi, which made it trickier but s. Point of phantom channeling. This is for slapping me years ago, Naruto stated coldly. Why can't I move? Hanada asked, her head painfully expanding. Her head then exploded, and her body collapsed. As Naruto stood there waiting for the next person to attack him, he felt a sharp pain in his arm. When he looked down to see what was wrong, his eyes widened to see his entire arm had vanished as the Kamui dissipated. Naruto screamed in pain and used his hand to stop the flow of blood escaping from his wound. Well, it looks like we won, Tsunade said as she and the others around him began to laugh at his pain. They had always found it amusing to see him suffer, and this was no exception. Do you think this is funny, Naruto growled, and the laughter grew louder. You all think this is fucking funny. Naruto scowled as he saw so many people in tears from laughing so hard, but his scowl soon turned into a smile as he chuckled for a moment. 
It's not as amusing as the expressions on all of your faces. When he said that, everyone around him stopped laughing, wondering what the hell he was talking about, but their confusion turned to shock when they saw Naruto poke a few places near the flesh wound, and out of the stump, the rest of his arm returned to what it had been before Kakashi's move. How did you do it? Asked Tsunade, who was speechless at this point after witnessing Naruto rapidly regrow a lost limb like that. A combination of my Uzumaki regenerative genetics, boosted by the fact that I am a Jinshuriki, and my fighting style hastened my recovery quite nicely. So, while Kakashi's plan was sound, it was pointless to try. But if it's any consolation, that hurt like hell. Naruto then moved faster than they expected and appeared before Kakashi himself. The man was on one knee because using the Kamui had taken so much out of him and he was taking a breather, but it appeared that he would not get that much needed breather because Naruto was here to finish him off personally. Naruto raised his hand in an open palm and slammed it down hard onto Kakashi's head with a chop. Splitting Slash on Stone Mountain Kakashi felt massive amounts of pain as his brain split in two, and as it did, his body fell over because he was basically brain dead at this point. Naruto ducked a punch from behind, grabbed her arm, and pulled her into position before slamming his fist into her gut. Her eyes opened wide in pain as she felt her body go numb and she was sent flying backwards. At this point, both Neji and Hiyashi appeared next to him and attempted to attack him in sync with their clan's signature fighting style, but Naruto simply ducked under their strikes and moved into a better position. While to others, their strikes appeared normal, but to Naruto, their strikes moved in slow motion, making it easy to dodge them. Hokuto Bone Destroyer Hiyashi screamed in pain as his arm bulged at first, but then the top of his head exploded. Neji attempted to strike him in order to avenge Hiyashi in some way, but Naruto knocked him off his feet with a quick sweep kick and threw him into the air. Once he fell, Naruto proceeded to pummel his back in multiple points, shattering Neji's spine. Wingbreaker Hokuto Naruto's body stiffened unexpectedly at this point, and when he looked to see why, he noticed his shadow had been caught in both Shikamaru's and his father's shadow possession. His enemies took advantage of his immobility, as Lee and Guy activated multiple gates and rushed him. Naruto felt every blow they hit him with, and after a minute of non-stop pummeling from the dynamic duo, they finally stopped and saw Naruto cough out blood. I'm glad to see you take this seriously, Naruto smirked as the power within him grew, it means this fight won't get boring. Naruto's body then expanded quite a bit as his muscles bulged out and he began to glow with a blue aura of power. His jacket exploded as his power grew, and before Guy or Lee could react to this sudden event, Naruto was upon them and striking the both of them with blows all over that caused their bodies to explode as the end result. Jiraiya smirked as the orb of energy he charged forward with connected with its intended target, who honestly let the attack hit him and felt its power explode around him. Is that all, Jiraiya? Do you think the battle is over because of one measly half-assed jutsu? That you have triumphed? Inquired Naruto, chuckling as the dust cleared around him, allowing Jiraiya to see that his attack had done nothing more than leave what appeared to be a slight sunburn on Naruto's chest where he had hit him. That hit you square in the face. You ought to be dead. Exclaimed Jiraiya, while Naruto laughed even louder. In my life, I should have died from a lot of things, but I'm a stubborn man. Especially when the one who attacked me is some weak little perverted fool like you, Naruto countered coldly as he walked slowly toward a stunned, worried, and angry Jiraiya. You Uzumaki filth never knew when it was best to lay down and die. Jiraiya exclaimed before unleashing the swamp of the underworld on Naruto, trapping him on the spot. The same can be said about you, Jiraiya. Naruto observed before pulsing his power to obliterate the swamp and slowly walking out of the crater created in the process. Why don't you die already? Jiraiya demanded angrily, throwing one jutsu after another at Naruto as he moved away from him to keep his distance, but it didn't hurt the former Jinshuriki one bit. Because I can't die at the hands of a moron like you. 
especially one who has no shame and tries to influence a prophecy he shouldn't have tried to influence in the first place, Naruto said as he batted Jiraiya's water jutsu upwards. You tried to use me to further your own goals with the prophecy that the Elder Toad told you. Then you tried to kill me when it became clear that I couldn't be controlled in order to avoid the prophecy entirely. Because, in your mind, if I wasn't going to help Konoha, you were going to make sure I wasn't a threat. I did what I could to ensure that the prophecy benefited Konoha in the end. Konoha will always be my home. I will manipulate a prophecy in such a way that half the world is butchered and Konoha stands over an endless pile of corpses. Nothing else matters to me except this village. I'll take the fame and recognition that comes as a result of my actions. But you didn't realize it. You've never done it. You chose to defy your life's purpose. Your intention was to fight for Konoha. Konoha is worth dying for. It was spitting in the face of the village all those years you wanted to live your life freely. Naruto, you were and still are fighting against everything. You are merely a pawn. A tool. A war weapon designed to eliminate Konoha's enemies and those who challenge our strength. You may or may not have died as we desired years ago, but your overall purpose in life remains unchanged. Not even once. The only difference is that you now have the foolish and unfortunate belief that you should be fighting against the very village that raised you. I will not tolerate it. Jiraiya exclaimed, while Naruto cruelly chuckled at his words. And that, Jiraiya, is why you will be forever. An idiot, Naruto remarked coldly, seeing only a fool in front of him, while Jiraiya snarled at the insult. My name is Uzumaki, and we live in freedom. At the very least, I'm not dead like you. Exclaimed Jiraiya before charging forward in the hopes of catching Naruto off guard and shoving a Rasengan down his throat. His mind was clearly not thinking rationally at this point because he clearly forgot that it didn't work the first time. Only to completely underestimate Naruto's speed, Naruto simply slammed both of his thumbs into the sides of Jiraiya's head, causing his body to go limp and cancelling his Rasengan. You have three seconds left, Naruto said as he walked away towards Sasuke, who was confident that he would defeat Naruto because he was a Uchiha. Those three seconds seemed to last forever for Jiraiya as they slowly ticked down. He thought of everything he had done as it flashed before his eyes, as well as his regrets. But the single regret he had that shadowed over all others. Not paying more attention to Naruto and believing his ruse as a simple-minded child. And his head exploded with that thought. So you killed the rest of those weaklings and saved the best for last, Sasuke said as Naruto stood with his arms crossed in front of his chest. How can you regard them as weaklings when you are no better than them? It's because I'm a Uchiha. We are and always will be superior to all others. As he said that, Naruto thought he heard Sakura scream in agreement to his vain statement, but that didn't make sense because Naruto had killed her with a slash of Nanto through her throat because her voice was and had always been so goddamn annoying that he took it upon himself to silence her forever in the most ironic way. Yet you are the last one, Naruto said, and with your death, they will become extinct. Sasuke was enraged beyond measure when he heard him say this to his face, so he activated his Mangekio Sharingan and summoned his Suzano, which encased his body in energy and lifted him up as if he were floating in the air. With this power, I am unstoppable. So you'd think, Naruto said as he took a deep breath and prepared to unleash the power he needed to defeat Sasuke, but in reality it just makes you a far bigger target to hit. After I kill you, Sasuke raged, I'm going to go find your wife and turn her into my little plaything. I'll force her to bear my children against her will until her mind crumbles and she screams my name as you fade away. I will find your son and torture him until he begs for mercy, and when he does, I will only increase the pain until he curses your name for having given birth to your son. Are you done? Naruto asked calmly, knowing that even though Sasuke said all those things, he was all talk and no real skill, so there was no real threat here. Because I'm bored. You're getting on my nerves. 
Sasuke then used his Suzano's massive fist to try and knock Naruto down, but Naruto simply moved his arms a little, and when he did, seven orbs of light appeared before him, and he placed his hands together as if charging an attack with his hands, and threw them towards the massive purple fist that was hulking towards him. The energy behind Naruto's attack not only stopped the Suzano's attack, but it. Celestial Destruction Execution Sasuke was on one knee on the ground, coughing out blood, his eyes now bloody sockets devoid of anything other than the blood that flowed from them. Look at the so-called, elite, Uchiha now, Naruto said as he walked towards Sasuke, who painfully rose to his feet and assumed a half-assed fighting stance, not looking intimidating in the least from his wounds as blood dripped from his now vacant eye sockets. Even with your eyes fully unlocked like they were, you still lost to me with but one move alone, the so-called, Dobi. The loser you mocked for most of your life, claiming over and over that you were better than me. How does it feel to gain all the power you craved only to discover that it wasn't enough to defeat me in the end? Go to hell, said Sasuke, with all the hatred his weakened body could muster, and threw a punch out towards Naruto's direction, but Naruto easily grabbed his hand and used it to turn Sasuke around while breaking his arm and holding it behind his back. You first, Naruto said into Sasuke's ear, but before you leave, let me tell you something simple. He felt Sasuke stiffen as he heard this, but before Sasuke could say anything else, Naruto punched him all over his body, causing him to spasm uncontrollably as his body expanded, causing him to scream in pain as his body finally exploded, sending his blood and organs all over the place. As he saw Sasuke die, he remembered the last conversation he had with Itachi. Flashback Itachi opened his eyes after a full minute, surprised to see that he was still alive when he expected to die at the hands of Naruto. I'm still alive? He asked, surprised because he had made peace with the fact that he would die and now he wasn't. Of course you are, Naruto said, holding a vial full of Itachi's blood that he had taken from his cheek after striking him in such a way that his body went numb that he didn't flinch, allowing him to take just enough blood from him to do what he needed to do. I was afraid you were going to kill me. Why would I kill the one person in Konoha who cared about my safety? Inquired Naruto, raising an eyebrow. I thought you needed to kill me to send a message to my brother, Itachi said as the illusionary world shattered and they were back in the real world. I do, Naruto said as he pulled two scrolls from the inside of his jacket and unrolled one of them before making a hand sign, which caused the vial of blood to shatter and the blood within it to transform into Itachi's head with his eyes half open and a pained expression on his face. But I only needed enough blood to clone your head. However, the head will not last long. I'm familiar enough with these things to know they don't. While that is true, Naruto said as he unrolled the second scroll, which contained a box with seals carved into it, and placed the head within it before resealing it into the scroll. This secondary scroll will basically halt the timer the head has so that it won't decay until it is unsealed. But none of that matters because there are explosive seals that will destroy it before it is ever tested in any way. I'm going for the shock factor more than anything else here. What now? Itachi asked, stretching a little to get the soreness out of his muscles that had become stiff while he was in the illusionary world. Well, that should be obvious, Naruto said, patting Itachi on the shoulder and smiling. While I'm flattered, Itachi replied with a smile, I'm sorry to say that I don't swing that way. Wait, Naruto said, puzzled, because his response had come out of nowhere and he had not expected it. What the hell do you mean by that? Hey, Itachi said, holding up his hand in mock defense, it's fine if you're gay. I'm simply not interested. Why the hell do you think I'm gay? Asked Naruto, raising an eyebrow. It's just a hunch. Are you aware that I am married? Yeah, Itachi smirked, and what is the name of the lucky man? Her name is Tsunami, you jerk. She is a lady. Do you know what a beard is? You realize I can still kill you, right? Yes, I am fully aware of that fact. Itachi said with a chuckle, and it felt good to express himself for the first time in his life. 
he had learned to suppress his emotions in order to become a far more efficient shinobi, but with Naruto it was more of a meeting of family members, so there was no need for such a thing because they weren't trying to kill each other. But, all kidding aside, Naruto said, holding out a key left to him by his master so that he could return one day and replace the scrolls he had taken from the vault in the first place, take this key and head to Whirlpool. Why, of all places, should I go there? Because you will be declared dead to the rest of the world, and with this key you can gain access to the Uzumaki vault and all the knowledge that it contains. And you're going to put your trust in me with such information? My mother would have trained you herself, so I think it's long overdue. Plus, as much as I wish I could, there are some jutsus I can't use because I lack the affinity to do anything more than a basic jutsu in that element. You, on the other hand, should be able to put them to use so that the knowledge is not lost. Well, thank you, Itachi said with a genuine smile as he took the key from Naruto's hand, and I wish you luck on your journey. Itachi then burst into a flock of crows and vanished from the cave, leaving Naruto smiling as he set out to do what he needed to do next. Flashback concludes. Naruto laughed as Sasuke died because he was the last person they had to throw at him other than Tsunade, but she was paralyzed and on the ground from earlier and hadn't moved a muscle, so Naruto walked over to her with a smirk on his face. And as you can plainly see, Naruto said as he came to a halt a few yards short of Tsunade, I have won this little bet between us, and as such, I am free to go as per our agreement. But given your gambling history, this comes as no surprise to me. But this time it will cost you far more than money, and unlike previous occasions, you will not be able to simply flee from the debt collector that is me. I fucking hate you, Tsunade said, glaring at him. I figured that out the moment we met, Naruto said, making a hand sign that caused multiple pillars to form from the ground at an angle that forced her up onto her knees while holding her head in place so tightly that she couldn't move it an inch. But why would you think otherwise when your old sensei was here, making my life a living hell in order to force me into submission? To create a weapon for me to use whenever you or anyone else demanded that I kill without regard for myself. But here I am, standing above your beaten bloody body, stronger than you ever imagined I would be, and victorious in this fight when you thought I would lose. But now that this is all over, and the boy you despised for so long has matured into a man, I am going to do to you what I have wanted to do to you since I first read about you in my mother's journal when I was a child. And to think you once referred to her as, family. Naruto then curved his fingers and swiped at her neck, causing the head to roll off her now severed neck. While he could have killed her using Hokuto, she was not worthy of dying from such a style, so he chose to use the Nanto style he knew as a personal insult to her. He threw the severed head into the still-shocked hands of the fire daimyo. A souvenir to remember this moment, Naruto said as he pulled out a scroll and put on his spare jacket. To remember the time when all your plans to control and rob me all failed. And now that I've won this bet, I'm going to leave. So enjoy your little war. Not so fast, Danzo said arrogantly as he blocked the path with a few of his root shinobi to enforce his will. You may have won the bet with Tsunade, but you will now be forced to submit and turned into a weapon to be used against our enemies in the coming war. Danzo, Naruto shook his head, why am I not surprised that you would try this route when everything else failed? I've always thought of you as a bitter loser, and it appears that I was correct. Hold your tongue, boy, growled Danzo, mentally noting that he would make the boy suffer even more than he had planned to begin with for his arrogance. I am no boy, Naruto said, holding out his hands, and all these dead bodies literally prove it. But back to the whole stopping me thing, did you forget about the airship monitoring this whole event? It doesn't matter, Danzo said as he snapped his finger, surrounded Naruto by a dozen root shinobi, by the time they deliver the news, you will be the obedient weapon you were always meant to be. Then we won't have to worry about our adversaries. A couple of things I want to say before anything else happens here, Naruto smiled, the first is that I knew you'd try this when your plan to defeat me failed. You expected me to be weak enough to be captured after all the fighting. This was a solid plan, to be sure, 
but one that I devised a strategy to counter. That brings me to the second point I wanted to make. A roar was heard from behind the stunned spectators, and they began to flee in terror as they saw the Kiyubi appear and quickly kill the route that surrounded Naruto, leaving only Danzo, the Fire Daimyo, Homura, and Kaharu. As you can plainly see, Naruto laughed as the Kiyubi, the size of a large horse, stood by his side, tails swishing behind him. I separated myself from the demon within me years ago. While you were preoccupied with me, my friend paid a visit to your underground lair and dealt with the root shinobi you had hidden there. You no longer have an army hidden in the shadows, as you once did. So you'll have to confront me like a real man, not the coward that we both know you are. Well, this is quite unexpected, Danzo said with malice as he used his one good hand to uncover the hidden Sharingan that he had hidden under his bandages. He was furious to hear that his route had been decimated and made plans to bolster the ranks once more when all was said and done. I believe you will have far more pressing matters than trying to control me or my friend here in the next minute or so, Naruto said as he lifted his hand in an open palm, and Danzo saw a seal light up on it in full view. Naruto smirked for a brief second before forming his hand into a fist, and as he did, the seal broke. When the others saw him die, they were shocked, and they stood still because they didn't know what else to do. Soon after, they were surrounded by a dozen shinobi from the attacking forces, as well as A, Onoki, and Killer B. Explosions and clear signs of attack were still happening all around the village, but that was secondary in their minds. As promised, Naruto said with a cocky grin, one heavily weakened village ready for your forces to attack and pillage. Well, I'll be, a smirked at Naruto, because when I heard from Onoki about this insane plan of yours, I honestly thought you were insane. But after seeing the walls fall like that, I have to hand it to you and say that you keep your promises. Onoki smirked as he remembered their conversation when Naruto first arrived in their village. Flashback as they sat in his office drinking sake and discussing their plans against Konoha, the bingo books with Naruto's updated stats had just been printed and were being sent out to Konoha as planned. They had a map of fire country spread out in front of them on the desk as they talked. So tell me what exactly is your plan here, said Onoki since he was curious what the son of their sworn enemy who was said to be a tactical genius on par with the Nara clan that also resided in Konoha could come up with. He was skeptical about one person such as Naruto doing enough damage to aid them in the coming war that they were going to have, but then he remembered that they thought the same thing during the Third Shinobi War and were utterly decimated by exactly one man with the ability to teleport all over the place via seal. Sure his men now had access to the Rasengan thanks to Naruto, but no one had gotten to the third stage as of yet so it was not a factor to put into any sort of planning like he had hoped it could at this point of time. It's quite simple. Naruto said as he took another sip of sake before continuing, I will return to Konoha itself. Which seems silly in the first place, because they'll just try to detain you as soon as you walk into the village. I'm using a shadow clone. Please don't interrupt. Oh. But first, I'll get diplomatic status with the help of an old friend who will be relieved to know I'm still alive after all these years. Once gifted such status I will do as I said and use a shadow clone to enter the village. There, they will try to persuade me to stay, and I know that if all else fails, they will dangle the possibility of becoming Hokage in front of my face, believing that I would do anything to achieve such a rank. You wouldn't, wouldn't you? No. Because it was never truly my dream to become the Hokage in the first place, nor could I become one even if I wanted to since there were laws in place that prevented not only me but all Jinchuriki from becoming one since we were meant to be weapons, not leaders. I knew that Hiruzen was manipulating me with that false goal, which was even more obvious when it becomes clear that to become a cage you have to have the respect of the people and all I ever got from them was their hatred so there was no chance of me ever becoming one. I just let those idiots believe whatever they wanted and played along so that one day, when the time was right, I could leave that place. They forced my hand when they exiled me, but everything worked out in the end, so no worries there. You've been planning this for a long time, haven't you? I've known since I was six years old that the village had lied to me my entire life and planned to do so until the end. 
But when they offer me the job for which they all believe I would do anything, I will still decline. They will get pissed and Tsunade will have no other choice but to make a bet with me since that is all she can do at that point to try and get me to stay. I'll make the terms which will have me fighting against their strongest shinobi, since with the info you posted in the bingo book they will take me seriously, which once they are dead will severely weaken the village. I'll also use Kiyubi to scout out the outposts and relay that information to you and Kumo so that you can eliminate them on your way here. Once you're close enough, Simply wait for the signal before striking at the village, which will be too preoccupied with me to react in time to stop your assault. And what exactly is this signal you're referring to? Believe me when I say it will be fairly obvious when it occurs because it will be the last thing you would expect to happen. Flashback concludes. And like you said, said Onoki with a laugh as he remembered the last bit of that conversation, your signal was quite literally the last thing we expected. I never imagined I'd see the day when Konoha's walls would crumble like that. The walls themselves were made with the help of the Uzumaki clan when this village was first founded, said Naruto, and as they did they placed plenty of seals on it as well to ensure it survived any form of attack. But when they did this they also placed well-hidden seals to counter all of those if ever came the case that Konoha betrayed them or became evil and corrupt like they have. Your fucking clan has been nothing more than a blight upon humanity, screeched out Kaharu in rage, and they deserved to die when they did like the freaks they were. Hearing that they intended to betray us in this manner only proved that we were right to do so. You know, Naruto mused, placing his hand under his chin, I always suspected there was more to that sudden attack during the second shinobi war that killed off my clan than what was revealed. Furthermore, the Uzumaki were suspicious and wrote about it in their final days, if the few scrolls one was able to salvage from the ruins were proof enough. But now that you've admitted to it so proudly, I don't have to wonder about it and can deal with you properly. Why are you even aiding him? asked Homura to Onoki, he is the son of Minato Namikaze. Your sworn enemy. The son of Minato you say, Onoki said glaring at Naruto for a second before growling and pulling out a small pouch of money and tossing it to Naruto, who was smirking the entire time. What, was all Homura could say as he saw this because he expected Onoki to attack Naruto rather than give him money. I made a wager with Onoki here the day we discussed our plan to attack this village in the same manner as he has. I bet him a pouch of money that if you, Danzo, or Kaharu were beaten like this, you'd reveal my true ancestry to the enemy in the hopes that they'd kill me like you did. Onoki didn't think you'd do it, but I knew better because you three were so predictable in your actions when someone took a step back and thought about it clearly. The three of them cried out in pain as they felt pain unlike anything they had ever felt in their lives seared through their bodies, but they did not explode like the others had. The technique was similar to one that Rao had used to make that one Nanto user suffer for three agonizing long days before they died, but the final blow silenced their screams so the people didn't hear them. Epilogue Naruto had gone and gathered all the leaders within it such as the cages, daimyos, and mayors to a massive meeting to explain how the world was past the wall in the west. He explained that there were those who would try and take over this side of the world at some point, and while the wall may protect them now, it would not last forever. While many expected Koyuki to be the empress of the newly formed elemental empire because she was the least corrupt of all the daimyos, Naruto persuaded them that they needed a leader like the cages of the various villages in the past because the bandits killed everyone and so-called royal blood, would not save them because it would flow from their corpse just like everyone else. Naruto took the time after Konoha was destroyed to deal with the Akatsuki members who had been hunting not only him but the other Jinchuriki as well over the years. While Naruto killed the majority of them, he spared three members, one of whom was Nagato's future wife Konan. He wanted to redeem himself for all the pain he had caused and this was the way to do so since he was a fairly strong individual. But, while all of this was going on, Naruto and several others made it their priority to find Orochimaru, who was still at large because he was well hidden, and unlike Jiraiya, they were able to find him easily because they weren't distracted with peeping on women like a pervert all the damn time. So once found, they launched an assault on his base and followed him from base to base as he fled one after the other, but were unable to kill him. 
Naruto had married all three of his girlfriends in due time, and each bore him children with Koyuki having his only son while the other two had daughters. His children trained with him in hopes that they could become the successor, but Naruto knew this was unlikely since there was never a successor who was the child of the previous one. He wasn't the only one who had a child, since Itachi married as well and had a son that became a prodigy like his father had been in his youth. His son was named Shisui after his friend who died years ago. This was the one who became his successor in time. But in the years leading up to Shisui's succession as master of the Hokuto style, Naruto knew he needed to make money to support his family, so he devised a brilliant plan. He and his father-in-law Tazuna built Eden's Gate, a massive establishment with a bar, cabaret club, and strip club on each floor. The bar was known as Limbo because all it did was pass the time like one would in the act. When Naruto discovered that Shisui was the destined successor to the Hokuto style, he devoted his time to training him in everything he could teach him, and he finished the training at the perfect time. Within a year of the end of his training, which had taken 20 years since he was trained when he was 5, the wall to the west was finally breached. A bandit named Meathammer had unified multiple groups of bandits into a massive army. Their fight was long and gruesome, and in the end Naruto fell since during the fight Meathammer's lackeys threw smoke bombs that were laced with poisons that messed with his senses as well as his body. In his youth he would have easily shrugged such a thing of quite easily, but as he got older his immunity to poisons waned as the years passed and his body got older. Naruto was killed via a strike through the heart, but Meathammer suffered a massive blow to his person when Naruto used the last of his strength to deliver a blow to his genitals to cause it to explode painfully. The Kyuubi was slowly dying since Naruto himself was killed because of the manner that he was sealed made it so, but he had enough strength to make it back and warn the others before he died himself. Meathammer had been pissed about what Naruto had done and ripped his body into pieces and placed them on separate pikes to send a message to the others. Shisui had grieved with Naruto's widows and children, and he set out with the main force to defend against Meathammer's. The two sides clashed, with heavy casualties on both sides since those from the wasteland had guns which those from the east were not ready for. Shisui had challenged the murderer of his master and personally killed him. Meathammer had tried using the same underhanded tactics that had killed Naruto, but Shisui had the Sharingan to see it coming and avoided it before he went around and went for the kill. He hit him in chest, causing Meathammer to die as the front of his chest exploded outwards in a violently gory fashion. Shisui then took Naruto's body and stitched it back together before burying it in his clan's ancestral home of Whirlpool, where there was a massive memorial for him since the man was the one responsible for bringing peace to their lands as well as warning them of what was to come. They built a massive city around the hole in the wall because they knew people in the wasteland would come in droves if they heard they had resources like them, so they built a massive gate and trained numerous security to guard it at all times, and as expected, many people showed up. This went on for years, with many others attempting to break through and control them all, but they all failed. Years passed, and Naruto's widows died from old age and were buried next to their husband as they asked to be. And as Shisui trained the next successor he couldn't help but smirk, since he knew that if Naruto was alive he would be happy about how their world had become, and that the Hokuto style lived on to this Daya. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.